Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, my dear respected viewers. Hello and welcome to the 28th episode of the Treaties of Rights series with me, your host, Ali Jassim. Today we will discuss the right of him who asks from you. Regarding this, Imam Sajjad Zain al-Abdin alayhi salam has said, and the right of him who asks from you is that you should grant him his request if you are certain that he is honest and you are able to fulfill his need. You should also pray to God to relieve him from what has befallen upon him and help him fulfill his needs. But if you doubt his honesty and he already has been accused of dishonesty, but you are not convinced about this, you will not be sure whether this is one of the plots of Satan who is trying to deprive you of your fortune and cause a blockage between you and your approach to your Lord. Then you should leave him and overlook and should turn him down gently. But if you can overcome yourself in this respect and grant him what he has asked for despite what is presented to you regarding him, then this is due to your resolution in the conduct of affairs. Islamic teachings greatly emphasize on giving a helping hand to the needy. In the Holy Quran it says, Believe in Allah and His Messenger, and spend in charity out of the substance whereof He has made you heirs. For those of you who believe and spend in charity, for them is a great reward. Charity is one of those actions that both ends are benefiting, the giving and receiving end. We understand how the receiving end is benefited, but how is the one giving benefiting? When a person gives unconsciously, feeling of content and happiness will arise. In research conducted by the National Institutes of Health, participants who chose to donate a portion of $100, they were provided enjoyed activated pleasure centers in the brain. When giving to others, you're adding more meaning to your life. You're inspiring your friends and families to also help the needy. And most importantly, if you have children, you're teaching them an extremely valuable lesson. And the Holy Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And spend something in charity out of the substance which we have bestowed on you before death should come to any of you. And he should say, O oh my Lord, why didst thou not give me respite for a little while? I should then have given largely in charity and I should have been one of the doers of good. Imam Ali, the commander of the faithful salam, says, The fuel of hell in the day of judgment is every person who is ungenerous with the poor and every religious scholar who sold his religion for worldly pleasures. Islam stresses that giving charity increases sustenance. The Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, his pure progeny, says, attract sustenance by giving charity. Imam Ja'far Sadiq says that everything has a key, and the key to sustenance is charity. And the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, says, the person who lends to Allah a good lending will receive many times more. Shaykh Kulaini in his book Al-Kafi relates the following tradition from Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq Cure your sick by giving sadaqah or charity and remove troubles or mishaps by giving charity and increase sustenance with charity. Charity banishes 70 shaitans from what is within one's beard and charity goes onto the hand of Allah before it goes onto the hand of the needy. Once Abu Abdullah asked his son how much money he had. His son replied that he had only 40 dirhams. Abu Abdullah asked his son to give it all away in the way of Allah. His son was hesitant and said that it was the only meager amount he possessed. His father replied that charity was the key to sustenance. Shortly after having given the amount in charity, the imam's son got 4,000 dirhams. The imam salam, said to his son, O oh son, we, we gave Allah 40 dirhams and he gave us 4,000. Through this, we can evidently conclude that charity is greatly recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It helps the person giving more than the person receiving. Time for a quick short break. Stay tuned. As Muslims, we should always strive to help those in need. There is something that is greatly presented and 
demonstrated through the actions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his pure progeny, and the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, his pure progeny, said, Ask questions from the learned, speak with the wise, and associate with the poor. Imam Amir al mumin alayhi salam, said, The cause of the cessation of one's wealth is leaving the needy heedless. The Imam also said, the Holy Prophet السلام, narrated from Allah the Exalted on the night of ascent, who said, O oh Ahmad, my love is the loving of the poor. Bring the poor nearer to yourself and situate them close to yourself in order that I approach you. Imam Sadiq السلام, said, Whoever satiates a hungry believer so that the one is satisfied fully, neither a human being among people, nor a near stationed angel, nor a divine messenger knows how great his reward is in the hereafter, except the Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Then he added, fearing a hungry Muslim is from among the means of forgiveness. After that, he recited the word of Allah, Almighty the Glorious, or the feeding on a day of hunger of an orphan near of kin, or to the indigent down to the dust. Surah Al-Balad number 90 verses 14 to 16. Now if you know the person does not deserve, you gently reject them without causing any hurt or hard feelings. Individuals should feel humble when someone asks from them. Humbleness is the opposite of arrogance and is an attitude and behavior that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, his pure progeny, have commanded us to have. Through the Holy Quran and through the actions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Imams, السلام, one can certainly conclude that they were the true embodiment of humbleness. The cordiality and humility of Imam Zain al-Abdin was well known among the residents of Medina. He used to deal with his slaves and maids also in the most cordial and gentle way. His behavior with his slaves was such that strangers failed to recognize which of them were the master and which one the slave. One day a father-son duo from Khurasan came to meet the Imam. When it was time for the dinner, the Imam moved forward to wash the hands of the guests. But he said, O oh, son of Messenger of Allah, I will not allow this, the Imam said, it is my duty. Why do you want me to be deprived of its rewards? Thus the Imam did not agree and at last washed his hands. After that he ordered Imam Muhammad al-Baqir to wash the son's hands. Here the Imam السلام, didn't see himself above anyone just because he was an Imam. On the contrary, he saw himself just like everyone else, even to the point where people didn't even recognize him. It is not only from the life of Zain al-Abidin that humbleness is portrayed, but also through the actions of all the other Imams. All his life, Imam Musa al-Kadhim never spoke with anyone in a harsh manner. He would never hurt the feelings of the others. He used to meet every high and low person in a humble way, and he fulfilled the needs of people with utmost sincerity. Pride and arrogance was never seen in his behavior. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily, Allah has revealed to me that you must be humble towards one another, so that no one wrongs another or boasts to another. Through this, it's quite evident that humbleness is of great magnitude. It is through humbleness that we get closer to Allah spiritually. Also, one should have humility when coming across any circumstance in that nature. Humility is to respect people according to their value and to not see themselves above them. It is to be considered as a great manner and is of great gravitation and truly deserves admiration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his pure progeny, with humility in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and lower your wing to those who follow you of the believers. The Hadith Bayt السلام, have also greatly emphasized on the importance of humility, and one can realize this through their actions, what they say, and their daily life. Imam Sadiq السلام, has said, on the Day of Judgment, there are two groups of people. Whoever has humility towards Allah, Allah will raise them. And whoever is arrogant towards Allah, Allah will lower them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, his pure progeny, has said, Indeed, the most beloved of you to me and the nearest of you to my position on the Day of Judgment are the best of you in nature and in humility. And the furthest of you from me are the vainglorious, that is, the arrogant. Imam Ali السلام, has said, It is good for the rich to show humility before the poor, to seek reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But better than that, is the haughtiness of the poor towards the rich with trust in Allah. We have reached the end of this episode. Stay tuned for another episode on the Treaties of Rights series. Thank you all for watching and may Allah hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.